Hey guys, what's up? It's me, Andres. Um, one of my favorite memories as a kid is to lay down in the living room when I was in a little trailer in Arkansas and I would read comic books on the floor in the living room. I had a little lamp and I would sit here and I would read comics. It's my favorite memories and sometimes when I really want to get into a book, I'll do that. I'll get on the ground and I'll read. Today, we're talking about Dune. And we're talking about one of my artist parents, Bill Sienkiewicz. Yeah. Um, Dune, for me, is right up there with Tolkien as far as, like, great stuff. Great, great fiction. I love Dune. I love the book. I love what Frank Herbert did. And I'll be honest, I've only read the first two books. So I do need to read the rest. But, um... I love Dune. I just love the story. Uh, I just recently actually learned that it's about Iraq and how it's all a symbolic of the oil industry and kind of like dependence on oil. And so all the words, all, all like Arrakis, all this stuff is, anyway, um, huge fan of the movie and book, even the movie. Um, and it's Bill Sienkiewicz, you guys. Okay, Bill Sienkiewicz, one of my favorite artists of all time. This was made in 1985, produced by Marvel Comics. This was a three-part little limited series. 85 is like the year of amazing comic books. If you think about, you know, the golden age of comics, you know, and a lot of times people say, oh, now's the golden age, or, you know, blah, 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 is the golden age. No, dude. 1985, like, 80 or like mid to late 80s is is the freaking golden age this is the same time that long shot came out okay by art adams okay brilliant work 85 what else are we talking about you know ronin's coming out soon dark knight returns watchmen all that kind of stuff but like 85 bill sienkiewicz uh new mutants a lot of just amazing stuff is going around that time i think shadow kyle baker was around then um dude mid 80s is like the hotbed of comics great stuff so i want to talk about this i'm a huge fan of sinkevich the only issue i have with this is that um the reproduction is a little poor because of the newsprint of the paper and just you can't really see some of the the really great line work now, some of that is his style, too, but if this was, like, on really nice paper or if this was, like, blown up, like, artist edition style, um, you would see some amazing stuff. Remember, this is 85 Sienkiewicz. This is, like, early Sienkiewicz, and it is great. It is really great. And um, I love this. I love this freaking story. I love the, the artist. This is the stuff that I'm going to keep and you save and you reference and you study. This is, that's why I talk about artist parents. It's like the art parents are the people you study. So um, this is stuff that is kinetic. It is um, energetic. It has line. It's great stuff. It's Dune. Let's talk about it here on the Art of Comics. Let's, let's do a deep dive on this stuff. Are you ready? Okay, guys, are you excited? Like, I'm excited about talking about Dune. Love this. We're going to just do uh, issues two and three. Um, it's sufficient. But let's just really quickly look at these covers. This, again, I feel is Sienkiewicz's, like, best era. Maybe I'm a little... He did some wonderful stuff with Miller with the um, Electro Assassin, too, though. But um, I just love the the shapes you know, the lines, the colors of this stuff. Now, I don't know how they they build these, these created these because I'm not sure if what access he had to the film clearly has a lot of access. And I think this came out after the film. But this is, I think, I mean, he made it out of VHS tape or something. I don't know. I'm not sure what access. But let's just assume that Bill had access to, like, the whole caboodle because he's there's shots in here that are like taken 
from the flip, the, the script, at least from what I'm uh, recalling. I haven't seen the film in a little bit, but um, I know that the David Lynch movie has problems, and of course we would rather have seen the, you know, Hodorowsky film version uh, with Mobius drawing it and all that stuff. Of course that would have been the, the best case, but I think that despite all that, I think Lynch did a great job, and I love the story, so I'm good with it. Um, again, this quality of paper just screws up the amazing ink work that's here. We just don't get to see it. But um, I love his textures, of course. Everyone tries to mimic this and ape this, you know, and this is like 30 years old. Um, it's just amazing stuff. Really cool little designs work on his panels. As far as the story goes, I should mention, it is scripted by uh, Ralph Macchio. And Ralph Macchio did a lot of Marvel stuff. I think he did some, I think he did some uh, Spider-Man. He did a bunch of other work too. But he was one of the big scripters and writers for Marvel in the 80s. And uh, this is during Jim Shooter's reign. Again, this is May 85. So, um, so this is kind of like, back in the day but I, I love the stuff that he's putting in here he's even adding some screen tone looks like here on the shadow which I really like um, but these characters I mean this is clearly from the actors right this is all looks just like that and if you know the story um, it's basically the Atreides family uh, you know get control of Arrakis and then um, they get betrayed by the Harkonnens, and Paul, who's the Atreides, becomes a uh, Moadib, and then becomes the um, the Kisser Hadrak. Okay, check this out. I love this stuff. I love the lines here. You know, another thing, you can really see the Sergio Topi. You can see Topi in his work, especially with stuff like this. And we'll see more of it. I'll try to point it out. One of the great things about Sienkiewicz that I study a lot is that he's using a lot of different tools. He's not just using tools like, you know, he's not just going to say, I'm going to use, you know, a freaking brush. You know, I'm going to use my, my brush and I'm going to use my, my nib, right? My G-pen. He's using brush, nib. He's using, you know, rapidographs. He's using, you know these charcoal pencils, he's using everything, and it shows, and that line variation and variation of tools really makes the art sing, and it really makes like the variation of line and, and the, the technique, uh, just makes it more dynamic. That's something you just learn as an illustrator. A great composition, dude. Just talk about composition here. Look at this. This is just so cool, this whole thing. He didn't make it straight, he, you know, slants things up. Great use of negative space, great composition. I also like this, and you gotta give it to the colorist. The colorist is doing a great job here. Um, but I, I do like the way he kind of like blocks, breaks it down into very simple shapes, you know, the head. We know that the face doesn't really have these kind of angles. They're not perfectly squares, but he breaks it down and simplifies it. Um, when needed for a fact and of course here he just puts a little bit of that like dry brush you know he just put a little bit of that dry brushing you know or a razor blade or a, or however he's doing it uh and it works works really cool so he was just a master of that kind of stuff he still is um you know and he gets from this album he gets some of this stuff from bob peak so bob peak and um and um um, Al Parker, you know, those guys, he, that's where he's getting some of these, like, illustrative kind of, like, effects and, and tricks. So, um, again, you could, I've studied this stuff. Look at this. I don't know why. This reminds me of uh, a little bit of um, Chaikin, the boot. Chaikin was usually, like, little pointy boots for some reason. And there's a stiffness to it, right? It's not you know, organic and flowy. It's very kind of like angular in in the positioning of stuff. Um, that's a different effect. You know, even um, like Simon Beasley does that too. If you look at some of Beasley's work with 
uh, in Lobo, you'll see he's kind of using a lot of angles for body positioning. These are kind of neat effects. Again, things you can't do in, in movies that you can do here in comics is you change the, dy the, the dynamics and dimensions of the frame. In a film, the frame's always the same frame. It's 16 by nine or whatever, and that's the frame. Here, we change the frame. We can make it into these other things that then turn into other objects and images. So you have images upon, that are built upon other images. That's something very unique. That's something really cool, and he's great at doing that. Again, another example of that. You have these little circles, and it's a face, and it's, a, and it's his mother now, it's not a baby, and it's this, and then it goes into this, and the hand, and. You know, this is stuff that you can't do in a film because you're you're locked into that frame. Whereas in comics, you can really play with the image. This reminds, this is another like Topi example. I, I think of Topi, and if you haven't seen that, go check out my video on Sergio Topi. I talk about that. Um, he was definitely influential to a lot of these artists in the uh, in the '80s. Italian guy. Okay. Um, yeah, this is the actress. I mean, you can tell a lot of the stuff is pulled from the, the film. But it's great stuff. I, I, I love it. And then I like the kind of the more um, ethereal, or not ethereal, but just like um, expressive work, right? The kind of more dreamlike stuff, you know, changing the panel borders to kind of also convey that. The great eyebrows. That actor had these wonderful eyebrows that were just massive. Really cool. Good faces, too. Okay. But if you look here, he's using like really a lot of little tight lines. This could be Croquil, or it could be a, a tech pin. It's hard to tell, you know, but it's really neat. We'll go to three real quick. Love this stuff. This Faye. Love the uh, David Bowie. This is a neat effect. Again, really cool effects with pen. I would love, love, love to see the originals. I want to see them. I want to study them. Great explosions. A lot of white out here. And a lot of splatter. Which is, which is a lot of fun. He's good at explosions, man. I can't do explosions like that. It's great. It's, like a, it's an art form just in itself to pull that out. Here's some great visuals. Which I don't remember in the film. I think some of this stuff is definitely a comic. The sleeper has awoken. Gets a cataract. Brilliant work. The colors are a little flat, and I like the flats, but you know, I wouldn't mind seeing it again recolored a little bit, maybe changed changed up. You know, they don't do this anymore where blacks are blue and it's just like a highlight of a black. Uh, part of me misses it, and part of me doesn't. Okay, we should talk about this too. I love Rick uh, Leonardi. Great stuff, and Terry Austin's a great inker. We should talk about that sometime. I need to, I need to get those, I don't think I have, I have a couple of them, but not a lot. Great positioning here. Uh, so yeah, this is, that's the end, and then it rains down. Beautiful face. That's it. That's all we're talking about. Um, huge fan of Dune. Huge fan of this stuff. Thanks, you guys, for watching. I appreciate you guys. Check out my Patreon right now. I am giving out uh, postcards to everybody. So even if you are $1, you get all the comics, which is like over 200 pages, and I'm going to send you in the mail postcard. Uh, other than that, thanks for watching about Dune. Have a good one, and we'll talk to you later. Bye.